One of the more challenging aches and pains or conditions to work through, hip pain. Now, why is hip pain so challenging? Well, it's a big ball and socket joint. It's a joint that is set up structurally to sustain a lot of impact and load, but yet we run away from that as a solution when we're talking about dealing with hip pain. So you have to understand and have a provider that, that knows mechanics, that knows loading principles, that knows rehab principles to help you best find a solution for dealing with your hip pain. Now, if you have hip pain, we're going to walk you through in this video a couple reasons as to why hip pain might be generated, especially when we're talking about certain regions, whether that's the front of the hip or the back of the hip or even the side of the hip. Now, with that, we're also going to show you a few tools that you need to understand that will help you deal with the pain immediately, but more importantly, talk about the, uh, the foundational principles about why it happens so that you can have a better conversation with your provider about dealing with neck pain. Again, running away from load is not the solution. Loading is actually the best thing that you can be doing if done appropriately. So if you're dealing with hip pain, whether again it's on the front, the side, or maybe even something in the back, and you want to get back to your activities, whether that's running, whether that's CrossFit, whether that's some form of hiking, or anything like that, this video will be very helpful for you. My name is Dr. Antonio Gurley with Live Loud Chiropractic and Coaching. We're based here in Lafayette, Colorado in Boulder County, and we love helping individuals such as yourself overcome the fear and anxiety of, of having pain, gain more confidence and understanding about how your body moves so that you can go out and live the loud, adventurous life that you were made for. Enjoy the video. All right, guys, so we're going to be diving in and showing you what we do for hip pain. Now, Hip pain, this is a big ball and socket joint. It is a very, very robust joint. It is intended to obviously be able to support your full body weight down into the ground, whether you're walking, whether you're running, whether you're jumping. It is very, very hard to damage anything within this structure, but it can happen, and our goal is to help you determine is there actually something that's damaged within the hip or is it something that kind of built up as, a, as, as maybe an overuse injury, but sometimes this is just a technique flaw. So what we've determined with some of our other condition videos, which if you have not seen those, please be sure to go check those out, there is oftentimes a mismanagement of loading. So for instance, this is not Rachel's story, but I just had a, I just had a conversation with a mom who is postpartum who wants to get back to running. Previously before running, she was running anywhere between three to six miles pre-pregnancy and she wanted to go back to that immediately but she was pregnant and postpartum so her body went through a lot of changes not knowing that we needed to regain a lot of the progressions that got her to three to six miles before. She thought, oh, I used to be able to do this before, I could just go back to that. So she's having a lot of hip pain. Not because something's wrong with her hip but because she, because she got back to three to six miles way too soon. So we have to understand there's a necessary progression. And where most people are having issues with that, call this like side butt area, this is where all your hip stabilizers are. So when you translate weight from one foot to the other, you're gonna feel that side butt or those hips engage. That's what helps stabilizes your, your ball and socket joint when you transfer your weight side to side. So this is one of the main areas that we're gonna be dealing with when we're dealing with hip pain. Now, fortunately, these are fairly easy fixes. You have to understand the whole loading progression, so we're gonna have an extensive conversation around that. Uh, and, and if you need help coaching or reprogramming that, we can also help you with that. But a couple things to do. So first, we have to look at range of motion. So we're gonna look at her squat stance, and we're just gonna watch her squat, right? We're looking for any sort of shifting discrepancies, pain that might be occurring from that. Perfect, she's gonna come back. Next, we're just gonna go into like a single leg lunge. So we're biasly loading one side more than the other. Great. And then next, we're gonna look at like a single leg arc pattern. So all she's gonna do is lift one knee, slowly kind of tilt back into like a single leg RDL, and then come back up. Perfectly, yeah. And then, so what we're looking for here is not only does she have the strength to do it, but also the stability. So let's say for instance, 
this individual wants to get back to running, she's all over the place. That tells us her balance is off. So if her balance is off, stagnant like this, every time she's running, she's gonna get excessive movement and wobbling, causing the muscles to basically grab and hold on more so she's not as out of control, right? So this is an important thing to determine. The necessary progressions of getting back to that, we might have to take a step back and work on balance, control, and proprioception before you get back into all the impact stuff that you want to be able to do. Now, strength is obviously a component of that, but on top of that, we also have to look at dealing with some soft tissue. So as we already indicated, sometimes this is a quote unquote overloading and the muscles are just simply sore because of that. So having strong, uh, able-bodied manual therapist to understand where to work, whether that's with our hands, dry needling, or cupping, to help you basically work on the soft tissue structures because you do want to work out hard. You do want to do all these activities. Sometimes it's just supportive nature. Nothing's actually wrong. You just need someone to know how to work into the area. But at home, you can do a lot of this yourself. So if Rachel was up against a wall, all she's gonna be doing is exploring that this is the hip bone. She's gonna be exploring different parts of the hip, all of those structures that have been tight due to maybe the loading that she's been going through, right? So if we're looking at this spine model here, here's the ball and socket joint, right? So essentially, we're just trying to get into all of these nooks and crannies and all these areas where the soft tissue is and the muscles to help alleviate the symptoms of these muscles just grabbing and working hard. Now, that's best case scenario. Let's say, for instance, it is something a little bit more in depth. We have to then address the loading progressions. Now, the second most common hip issue that we see is what we refer to as femoral acetabular impingement. So the femur and the socket are basically pinching up against each other. Now, the reason why I'm addressing this is this is my soapbox. Too many people are being told to squat with their feet, shoulder or hip width apart, and their toes straight. Certain anatomy will just not dictate and allow you to do that. For some, it might work well. For others, it does not work at all. So you have to determine the best squat stance based on your anatomy so that you're not jamming your hip into the front. Typically, this presents as a pinching in the front of the hip or a very tight psoas, which gets blamed for way too much on the front side because it's guarding and protecting your hip from being jammed up. So we'll see here, Rachel's gonna turn towards me and she's gonna squat with a super narrow stance. We know what her squat stance is, but when we're squatting, you can see she's off balance, her toes are wanting to raise up a little bit, right? And she can't get down very far. Now this is, a, this is other people, good, you're, other people will look at this and say, oh, well, you know, let, lift your chest more. Let me see more of your chest if you had like your name on front of it. All that would do is force her to crank her back up, creating issues in the back. Or they'll say she has ankle range of motion limitations because it doesn't look like her ankle's going far, very far forward. Those are neither nor the case. It's just that the way she's stacked, her joints can't work together. Whereas she opens up her stance, Right now she can squat down beautifully. Lumbar sp or spine stays long. And knees go plenty over toes, so there's no ankle range of motion. So we have now determined that it wasn't a mobility issue at all. We were just simply using the wrong pattern. Now what this also does is it clears the hip. If we're too narrow, again that femur runs into the socket. Whereas if we go wider, it now allows your hip to deepen its amount of flexion, and it clears those pinchy spots. So if you're having a pinchy hip when squatting or doing something like that, I almost guarantee you that going slightly wider will improve your symptoms, if not improve your squat patterning in general, allowing you to lift more. So at home, a few things that you wanna do, basic soft tissue, your hip, being how big it is, it's usually just that it's getting overloaded and the muscles are just generally a little bit tight and a little bit of trigger point work goes a long way. But if you're dealing with the more pinchy front hip issue, a wider stance will be a game changer for you. Now, many of these conditions are somewhat acute in nature because we we either had this rapid increase of load progression or we just started squatting more and we now feel this. And having someone help you navigate that will make a big difference so that you don't have to take a lot of time off. You don't have to take a step back. But if this is something that's chronic and has really been hindering what you've been able to do, don't wait any longer. Come in and see us. Have a proper assessment and evaluation done to determine if it's soft tissue, if it's structural, or if it's just simply we need better load progressions of understanding how to get stronger 
without irritating it. So if you're ready to deal with your hip pain once and for all, come in and see us, get a proper assessment done, get a proper evaluation done to determine is it soft tissue, is it structural, or is it simply just a lack of understanding on how to properly load, load you through a progressive way so that you can get stronger and more mobile and enjoy all the activities that you enjoy doing. What's up?